Welcome to the special edition of E-Cystic Fibrosis Review. I'm Peter Mogazel and I'm here with Michael Constant from Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland. We're in Dublin at the European Cystic Fibrosis Congress. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Constant. Thank you, Peter. Mike, I know that you've talked about adalurin at the conference. What is adalurin? So adalurin is an investigational drug that's uh, targeting uh, the nonsense uh, CF mutations. Uh, how common are uh, nonsense mutations in individuals with CF? Uh, they occur in about 10% of uh, CF patients. Can you tell me the mechanism of action of adalorin? How does it work for uh, patients with nonsense mutations? So the, the problem with the nonsense mutations is that a stop codon is inserted uh, into the, uh, the mRNA uh, that then leads to the production of a protein, and so the protein isn't made. And what adalorin does is it allows uh, to have a read-through of that stop codon uh, such that a full-length protein can be made and it be functional. Is it specific for CFTR or does it work for other uh, proteins as well? There are other proteins that have uh, nonsense mutations and in fact uh, adalorin has also been uh, investigated uh, in uh, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. So there's a whole program uh, looking uh, at adalorin uh, in that disease. I know this was a phase three trial. Uh, how many patients were involved and how long did the trial go on? So this trial uh, uh, was conducted in 238 patients. Uh, they came from um, 11 countries and uh, the trial lasted for 48 weeks. So what was the result of the trial? Uh, there were two main results that came out of this trial. Uh, the first was in looking at uh, the change in pulmonary function. That was mm -hmm. our primary endpoint. We were looking at the uh, relative change in the percent predicted FEV1 mm -hmm. uh, from baseline to week 48. Mm -hmm. um, and that result uh, turned out that uh, in the placebo group, uh, they lost 5.5% uh, mm -hmm. of their FEV1, uh, while in the adalorin group, uh, they had lost 2.5%. So we had a 3% difference uh, between the two groups. And was that a statistically significant difference? Uh, looking just at week 48, uh, it was not significant, but if you average the, uh, all of the visits, uh, the treatment effect across all of the visits, mm -hmm. uh, we did reach statistical significance. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Were there any other differences between the adaluran group and the placebo group? The, the other major finding was uh, the rate of exacerbation, so that was the uh, secondary endpoint, and there we found a 23% reduction uh, in the rate of exacerbations uh, in the adalorin group when compared to placebo. I know that there were some other endpoints that were looked at in this trial. When will the uh, analysis be available for those uh, findings? So there are a number of tertiary endpoints that we're analyzing now, and we hope to be able to present those at the North American uh, Cystic Fibrosis Conference in the fall. Were there any uh, safety concerns during the trial? Uh, there were the a number of adverse events occurred. They were most common that we see in CF, uh, mostly related to the pulmonary and the GI uh, complications that we see. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that uh, looked a bit higher in the adaloin group uh, were some elevations in creatinines. Uh, those were all mild, self-limited, um, and uh, were controlled throughout the trial. Mm -hmm. Were there any subgroups uh, within the study that you looked at? Uh, there were a number of subgroups, and uh, we actually found a very interesting result uh, when looking at the patients who were on uh, inhaled antibiotics, particularly mm -hmm. those that were receiving aminoglycoside uh, antibiotics. What was that? So it turns out that uh, if you just look at the patients who are on aminoglycosides uh, and compare the adalorin and the placebo group, mm -hmm. we saw no treatment effect there. Converse is true. When you exclude those patients, the treatment effect on adalorin uh, was uh, twice as great uh, for both the FEV1 mm -hmm. measure as well as on the rate of exacerbations, much uh, half as many uh, rates of exacerbation uh, when you exclude the aminoglycoside group. Other antibiotics such as uh, as trianam or colistin didn't have the same effect as aminoglycosides. That's correct. Uh, they did not seem to impact the, the uh, treatment effect. Um, why do you think that the uh, effect was there with tobramycin? Well, it turns out that uh, tobramycin uh, binds to a ribosome, the mm -hmm. same site where adalorin acts. And this ribosome is what uh, is used to translate the, uh, the mRNA uh, to make its full-length protein. Mm. And so it's actually interfering with adalorin's uh, mechanism of action. Was this effect of uh, tobramycin something that you anticipated? 
Well, it was a possibility, knowing knowing that it's, it binds to the same uh, place that, that the adalorin does. Mm -hmm. And that's why, at the beginning of the trial, the patients were stratified as to whether they were on inhaled antibiotics or not on inhaled antibiotics. Does that mean that the uh, drug is only going to be effective in those patients that are not on inhaled antibiotics? Uh, it's too early to tell. Uh, we're still uh, looking at the data mm -hmm. a little bit deeper to see uh, how important that, that may be. Uh, clearly, these patients are on other mm -hmm. inhaled antibiotics as well, uh, so tobramycin isn't their only choice. Mm -hmm. uh, were there any differences based on lung function or age? Uh, the uh, patients were divided uh, above 18 and below 18 in the stratification, and the patients, uh, the younger patients, uh, had a, a larger effect uh, compared to the older patients. Mm -hmm. And also the patients who had FEV1 above 65 percent of predicted uh, had a greater treatment effect compared to those below 65. What are your thoughts on why that might be the case? Uh, we're still sort of delving into that mm -hmm. data, but it's, it actually turns out that that may be a good thing mm -hmm. uh, because we're obviously looking at the long-term use of drugs like Adalorin uh, that are directed at the basic defect, and uh, the idea would be to preserve lung function. So younger patients with high lung function would be a, a great target mm -hmm. uh, for, for all of these therapies. Uh, so what's the next step for Adalorin? Are there more trials planned? Well, the, the uh, Phase three trial has an extension study, mm -hmm. so the patients that participated in the phase three trial are now in a 96-week extension uh, period, but we'll be getting more information mm -hmm. about both the efficacy and the safety of long-term adalorin use. Thank you, Dr. Constant, for joining me, and thank you for joining me for this special edition of E-Cystic Fibrosis Review.